leadership concepts in the film Master and Commander. Um, this is really a film all about decision making, thinking on your feet, um, and how your previous experiences can help you to make decisions. Um, so the plot of this movie is simply this ship captain is tasked with, he's a part of the English Royal Navy, and he's tasked with hunting down a French ship. Um, and it, there's lots of different things that happen throughout the movie um, that sort of, like any, like most of the military structured uh, movies, and even Star Trek, how the, the chain of command is structured on the ship, it's very similar on, um, on even like a, a ship during the Napoleonic Wars. Um, so right away at the beginning of the movie, there's definitely a moment that lets us know that it's about decision making. There's one of the, the watch captains. He's like, I think I saw something in the fog. I don't know. I don't know if I should call this. I don't know if I should call this in. I don't know if I should call this in. And um, his buddy just goes like, you have to call. You have to make the decision. You're the watch captain. And the guy just freezes up and his buddy turns around. He's like, all right, man, battle stations. Because right or wrong, you got to make a decision and stick with it. Um, you know, and that's kind of where the role of best guesses or bounded rationality, because they know we're at war and we saw a shape in the fog. You know, normally maybe seeing a shape in the fog is not cause to wake everyone up, but when we're at war, it is. And that was the point of that. Um, and you know, luck is how things unfold because, you know, he could wake everyone up, they could not get the rest that they need and there could be no threat and then that could hurt them the next day. You got you to make your best guess, though. And, um, you know, Captain Jack is very, um, he's very charismatic in the way that he illustrates this. And at dinner, he's, he's you know, it, he's having dinner with, with some of his officers. And he, he tells them there's two little weevils that are crawling around on a plate. And he's like, you got to make a decision. Which weevil do you want? Because he knows that the guy upon it, he's going to be like, it doesn't matter. And he goes, no, it does matter. You have to, you're forced to make a decision, go. Um, and this kind of plays in with the mentorship. He's teaching him a lesson on you need to make a decision and stick with it. And of course the guy goes, well, the bigger one. And he goes, wrong. You always choose the lesser of two weevils, making a pun, which really shows his humor and how he teaches. And he's like, no, you're going to take this seriously. And he's like, but don't take it too seriously. Make your decision. It's a very, um, it's, very, it's, it's a very humorous moment in the film. Um, and, you know, mentorship is a big deal um, on this ship command. Like, Jack comes up from a kid, and so, if, as, a, as a child, and, like, gets promoted. And, like, so does, there's children on the ship, and, like, they, these young men are sort of promoted up through the ranks. And, like, that's, they, they're sort of this whole own little community within, which I think is really cool. Um, you know, decision-making, rational, bounded rationality, creativity. You know, there's, you know, rational is, like, well, I can see everything all, and I can see the best outcome, so I'm going to pick the best outcome. Bounded rationality is like, I don't really know, but based on the information that I have, I'm going to make the best decision. Then creativity is really where you get to, you, you start thinking outside the box, and that's where you can come up with some of, I think, the best solutions. Um, you know, Patterson, you quoted Mike Tyson in the lecture. You said, You've got to plan until you get punched in the nose. And that's very true. And I remember on the bike rides, you know, Valentine, Nebraska, we were going to ride right through, but instead, you know, it was raining. So we actually took that day to, you know, we just took a day and we stuck with that decision. And it was awesome. I actually bought my first record ever there. And that started a whole tradition of leadership trips, me buying records, which was a really cool learning and fun experience that I got to have throughout college. And I have all kind, you know, this one, this one, I bought ELO for three bucks at a, at a, anyways, um, but, you know, you, you change the plan, you stick with the plan, there's a whole new plan, and, um, you know, that, that creative side of it, I, we got to find a whole new adventure to have on multiple leadership trips, because we stopped in Valentine, Nebraska, started a tradition for me, because it was raining, because we made the call, after we got, you know, metaphorically punched in the nose. Um, you know, there's different models of how you want to deal with things. Um, the utilitarian model, you, you want to come up with, with the good of, of most of the people, um, which is going to be, 
kind of a Star Trek thing, going back to that. You know, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. I don't think they said that in Nemesis, but it's definitely a, a core theme. Um, you know, the moral rights model, we want to, like, focus on those fundamental individual rights. And I think that has to do, you know, on a ship, when a man goes overboard, we need to, we need to stop and get him if at all possible because we want him to not die even though it's really not convenient for everybody. It doesn't have to do with everybody. We need to save that man. Um, the justice model, um, equally distributing benefits and harm. Um, that's kind of like we're in this together. And that has to do with, um, with group efficacy. You know, um, like, I'm going to take your, your struggles, I'm gonna, but I'm going to take your good and your bad. And I think that that's really what being a team member is all about. Um, you know, recently in my own life, I've been reading a lot, um, in the book of Ruth and, you know, where you go, I go, where you stay, I stay, your people will be my people. Um, and that has to do with, you know, it's, you know, Ruth says to Naomi, like, Hey, like you're still my mother-in-law. We're still in this together. Like I take the good with the bad. Um, or when you get married to someone, you know, it's in the vows, you know, for better or for worse, you know. Um, you know, for, you know, sickness, health, like, I'm there for you. And I think that's why the justice model is, is cool. Um, it's unique. It, you equally distribute those benefits and harm. And I think that's kind of that way on a, on a ship too. Um, you know, you're gonna, they're gonna share in those victories together and they're gonna share in those, those losses together. And, um, that was kind of what I got on of the leadership structure of a ship. Um, you know, mentor, mentorship, um, is, is like I mentioned before, it's, it's a very important part of the, of the ship structure. We see the, the kids and how they come up through the ranks and how they're just as much part of the crew. Um, you know, and they're, and they're brave, man. Um, there was... You know, one of the one of the crew members having to operate on one of the kids after he gets injured, and like you can just see like the low level of mutual respect. You know, this is like a grown man with like probably like a twelve year old, um, and there's that that level of mutual respect that's really cool. And the last thing I want to talk about um, that we had talked about in in the lecture was attribution theory. Leadership exists in the minds of the followers. Um, and that's on just, like, when you're the ship's captain, you dress and talk like the ship's captain. Like, when you're, you know, the professor, you come in and you take, and you're like, so they can see that that's, that's what a leader looks like. And, um, you know, do you, do you act like a leader? Do you set yourself apart from, from the rest of the group? Um, and that's important, you know, because you can know you're a leader, but you got to project that to the people that are around you. Um, I think that's really important. Um, and I think, what, what was the other movie? Uh, Dead Poet Society. That was one that we, I think that there's a lot of attribution theory that, that happens there. Like he doesn't exactly look like a normal leader the way that he presents himself, but because he chooses to solve problems, not just rationally or bounded rationally, but creatively like standing on the desk and you know getting his getting his students hyped up because he takes control like that then they they start to attribute to him the aspects of a creative leader which they are they're willing to follow even to the point of getting in trouble like with the oh captain my captain scene um so yeah attribution theory you you know leadership exists in the minds of the followers um Uh, yeah, bounded rationality, you know, you, you, you gotta choose the lesser of the two weevils. Um, you know, no matter what you choose, there might be a bad outcome, but if you're gonna wake up the ship, like, go ahead and wake up the ship. And I thought that I was cool that was, like, the first scene, because it kind of set the tone for me. I was like, okay, I, like, after I had heard the lecture, I was like, I understand where this is going, and I didn't get the weevils pun yet, but once I got it, I was like, oh, that's funny. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Act like a leader. Make, make look like a leader. Make concise decisions. Be creative with your with your solutions. People will see you as a leader.
you know, don't be afraid to get punched in the nose and keep going, make a new plan.